Did you know about the updater function in React use state hook? Another question is, do you understand why developers sometimes pass callback functions to use state hook as you can currently see on the screen? Well, this callback function is known as an updater function. In this video, I'll be helping you understand why this function is very important and you will also get to understand more about the use state hook. I'll be using this simple example here to explain the updater function. So here I'm keeping track of an age state. By default, it's 40. I have this function which updates the age state by one. And when you click the increase age button, it calls update age. And if we come here and we increase age, it's increasing by one. Now, let's say we have set age, age plus one, and then we have this repeated like four times. Now, what you'd expect is that the age state is going to be updated to 40 plus one, which is 41, to 42, to 43, to 44. Well, let's try that out. If I start again and I click increase age, oh, well, this is only increasing by one. Why is it not? not increasing by four. Well, to understand this, this is why I'm going to use a diagram. You need to understand how the use state hook works. So when your component is rendered the first time, you have an age state of 40. Now you do set age 40 plus one, which is going to be set age 41. When you do this, the age state for this first render is still going to stay at 40. Set age would not update the age state for the current render. It will only update that state for the next render. So in the second render of this component, age is now going to be 41. And if again you have set age 41 plus 1, which is 42, that is going to be for the third render. Why is it important to understand this? Well, if we go back to our code, when you say set age h plus 1, which is set age 41, since we are still in the current render, your remaining set ages will still see the age state as 40. So what you are basically doing here is 40 plus 1, 40 plus 1, 40 plus 1 for all of these set ages. And that is why it is still increasing by just 1. In the next Next render, the age state is going to be 41. So even if you increase it to 42, that is going to be for the third render. For the second render, all of this age plus one was still going to be 41 plus one. And that is why it only increments by one. So now how do you tell React that when I do age plus one here and age is 41, I want to get access to that updated state. I don't need the state for this render anymore. And this is where you can use an updater function. Now for your updater function, you can choose to use the updater function for the first set age, but let me just use it for the second to the fourth set age. You have your function, whether it's an arrow or normal function, and that function is supposed to return something for the new state. So this callback function is going to receive the age argument and then here you can have age plus one and I can repeat this for the other two. And if I come here, start again from 40, you can see it's now increasing by four. What exactly changed here? Now let's go back to our diagram. Now, like I said, when you say set age 40 plus one, the new age state is going to be used in the second render. But also what you need to understand is that that React keeps some kind of queue for what is going to happen for the second render. So let's assume this is our queue. Now, when you say set age 40 plus one, which is set age 41. So this is going to be in the queue. You're telling React, okay, for the next render, I want to update my age state to 41. But also when you have an updater function, this is also going to be in the queue. But the difference is that this age state is going to refer to the updated state that you have for the next render. This age state is not going to be tied to the first render, which is 40, but instead it will have access to 41, which is the new age state. And let's say you have this updater function two times here. This first function, like I said, is going to be added to the queue. This second function is going to be added to the queue. So you can think of your updater function like a callback function that you schedule to run in the future. So React is going to batch all these state updates in the queue. And now now it's going to run in the order in which you added to the queue. So first it runs set age 40 plus one. The age state is now 41, but since there are still more items in the queue, it continues. So when you say set age, age, you get the pending age state, pending in the sense that this is the age state to be used in the next render and you add one to it, this now becomes 42. But before the next render, there is still something else in the queue. You have age again and age now is going to refer to the current 
pending age state which is now 42 as this line has already updated it to 42 and then when you have age plus one that's going to be 43 and if you had another set age like we do in our code that is now going to be 44 and then after running all of this react can now render your component the second time age is now going to be 44 i can take this line off and if you repeat that again for the third render the third render is now going to be 48 and so on so coming back to our code this is why it's now going plus four plus four so you can think of the updater function as a way to get the pending state pending state like i said in the sense that the state that is supposed to use for the next render if you're not using an updater function you can only have access to the current state in the current render but in an updater function you can have access to the state that will be going into the next render and this way you can now get the most current state like in this case for age so this is why you see it in some react code bases whenever you want to update a state that depends on a previous state you would see a lot of people using updater functions like this if i just want to update this to 80 i don't need to use an updater function but if i want to update my state to something that depends on the previous state using an updater function like this is just a way to ensure that i'm getting the most current state possible now your next question would be why not just do age plus four like this well you can choose to do age plus four and you wouldn't be running into such problems i think it's not really common but in some cases you might want to update your state multiple times and the only way to ensure that the next line of set state has access to the previous value return from the previous state then you have to use an updater function and maybe you're also thinking if you call set age four times it's going to render your component four times well coming back here like i said react would batch all of this state update and would run them just once so instead of running the first one re-rendering your component running the second one render your component react to just be able to go from this to this to this to this and at the end it would now know what the age state would be for the second render so by going through this batching and order of execution your component is not going to be rendered four times it's only going to be rendered one time so i hope this gives you more understanding about the use state hook and also helps you understand why you see developers using callback functions in their use state hook if you enjoyed this video well i have more react videos on my channel where i explain different concepts you can check out any of the video currently shown on the screen please give this video a like share with other developers and subscribe for more simplified react videos like this